Now let's go deep into a hot topic. And Jonathan could do this better than me. One of the shiny balls in HR today is digital HR. Why is digital so important? Why is digital so important? What's the message? If you were to say, digital HR is really about, what's it about? Here's my answer. It's about information. It's about accessing information. It's about accessing knowledge and information that allows us to make better decisions. And that's what digital HR tries to do. The digital information age is so powerful. I'm going to suggest four stages. Stage one of digital HR is efficiency. Payroll. We have great payroll automated companies who do a great, great job with payroll. True or false, Michael? True, true. Can you name one? <laughs> no, that was a softball. SAP, Oracle. Systems that put in place an efficiency part of hiring, training, compensation, payroll, benefits. Then on stage two, we have dozens of innovations. Dozens of innovations about what digital HR can do to help us. Stage three is information. Will digital HR give us information that has business impact? This is where a digital business is having a huge place. How many have received an email from a technology company? Because they know you, like from Amazon. They know what you buy, they know what you purchase, they know your patterns. Because of that, they have information that allows you to be successful. And stage four is connection. Are we using digital HR to build relationships, to overcome that social isolation? Here's my experience. In the digital HR space, 80 to 90% is stage one and two. We see digital HR, and I'll give some examples. Lots of innovation, doing what we do better or doing more innovation. I predict that in the next couple of years, digital HR will move to stage three and four. We'll start to use digital HR to connect information, not about our employees, but about our business, and how that information from customers and investors will allow us to make better decisions. And ultimately, I hope we can use digital HR to build relationships. You talked yesterday about the tribe. You talked yesterday about the connection and culture. Digital HR should be a vehicle to form those relationships. Let's give some examples. People, we interview by social media and technology. That's a great innovation. It's a great idea. In fact, one of the things our, our son found, um, somebody did their PhD, if you've got a good employee, when are they at risk of leaving? What can digital HR tell me? When is that employee at risk of leaving? When they update their LinkedIn website. <laughs> By the way, kind of a stupid thing, but check, are my good employees updating their LinkedIn website? That's a sign. Performance. Share everybody's goals. Qualtrics, they have digital HR. Everybody's goals are public for the whole company to see. It's an innovation. It's a peer pressure that they're trying to create. Performance, managing appraisal through automated evaluations or interactions. Communication, sharing information, running town hall meetings live. Organization, decision making. In the digital HR space, there are so many innovations coming. How many of you, in the, well, let's do another finger. In the last month, how many emails did you receive with the latest and greatest digital HR solution? Who's received? How many do you receive? Five, ten. By the way, I'm sending them out. So, <laughs> you know, I'm now feeling overwhelmed. I'm getting one or two a week. How do I know they're good? I hope you leave this conference having a way to think about 
which of those innovations in digital HR, for example, and I'm probably going to offend somebody here, last week I got invited to join a board of a company that can um, take a digital image of your face and based on the facial measures, the, the, the width, the eyes, and everything else, they can define your leadership style and predict how you lead. And they said, would you be interested in joining our company? And I said, have you seen my face? <laughs> you know, you saw my younger brother on the pictures a few minutes ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so what do you do with all these new digital innovations? Here's what I've done for years. I delete them all. <laughs> Sorry if you're a digital HR player. Because I don't know what's good. Here's what I hope you leave this conference with. Do I have a way to assess innovation in HR? Here's my assessment. Let me give you two or three criteria. One, will it add value to customers and investors? When I glance through their website, what percent of their website is dedicated to the technology versus the value it creates for a customer or an investor? I've just eliminated 80% of digital HR. Two, is it based on research? Is it building on something else? I have a friend who teaches computer science, the college students. Every semester, some student comes in and says, I've got the best app that ever was. It's going to change the entire world. Help me make my app go public. 19, 20-year-old student. Here's what he always says. Take a class in coding, and then take another one, and then come talk. Why do I say that? I think sometimes in HR we forget there is a legacy, a history of exceptional HR work. Does CIPD have access to that? Absolutely. Dave, have you seen that in your work? Absolutely. If the digital HR solution is not based on research and history, instead of saying we're going to change the world, I think you're much better off to say we're going to move the world forward by 5%. Three, will the digital HR linked to the strategy of the business. Four, will the digital HR be adapted? Are they coming to me with a solution versus an option? I think in technology, we're going to see much more with information. This phase is so critical. And one of the things that I think is critical in this phase. There's two kinds of information in the world. One kind of information is called structured information. It's the analytics, it's the statistics, it's the spreadsheet, it's big data. Amazon has information on you. The other kind of information is called unstructured data. It's what you observe, what you see, what you feel. In the world of information today, what percent of information is structured in spreadsheets and analytics versus unstructured in observation? 2080. 20% 20 of the data in the world is, is structured. You can do a spreadsheet. You can do analysis. 80% is what you observe. What have you observed these last two days? What do you observe when you walk around Brussels? What do you observe when you walk around Moscow? Are we in HR accessing both types of information? Yes, we should have statistics. We should do the analytics. We should do the rigorous spreadsheet. But even more, I think we should do the unstructured information. How do we find that? And how do we use technology to help us access? Um, I've talked about that. Where I think we're ultimately headed in digital HR is connection. Who has uh, done FaceTime or uh, Skype with a, with a friend in the last 48 hours? Oh, that's Stand up. I want to see. Who Skyped or FaceTime in the last 48 hours? My goodness. We have a room of Gen Xers. Uh, no, you can have a seat. That's amazing. How did it work? I think it's wonderful. We should be finding ways in HR to use this digital knowledge to connect people. 
Gary talked yesterday about WD-40 and the need to feel part of a tribe. I can give you some examples. Whoops, I don't have examples up here. Let me give some examples. Um, my friend Jeff Sheets, who's in advertising, he says, in advertising today, there's three things you look for. Authenticity is somebody real. You don't want to have Justin Bieber or a Kardashian selling your product today. It's probably not, everything there is probably not real. Number two, it has to be experience-based. And three, it's got to, experience means it's real and it's got to be meaningful. He said that's the three th pillars of good advertising today. I think the same is true with digital HR. A company decided to do digital HR, and I'll just give a couple of connection examples. Every Monday morning, they want to do a video clip of the general manager. In a suit or not in a suit? Suit, no suit. What do you think? No suit. That's not authentic. You don't wear a suit all the time. You're comfortable. In a studio or not a studio? Not a studio. A script or not a script? No script. They go to the general manager and they say, in two or three minutes, what's on your mind this week? And he says it. He scratches his head while he does it, or he perspires. This is the company. Or he scratches his nose. Oh, let's edit that out. Good or bad idea. Terrible idea. Make it real. Make it authentic. They found when they started posting that, within two posts, it was the number one looked at thing on the company website. People wanted authenticity. They wanted to feel connected. They wanted to use technology to get them connected. We